Hi, I'm Mike Ridley and welcome to Power Boat Television. Well, over the years we've covered a lot of places for some great recreational boating, from both of our oceans on the coast to the Great Lakes and more. But nobody's ever suggested that we come boating in Alberta. Well, this week that's exactly what we're going to do as we jump into some locally built jet boats and tour some of the fantastic rivers. Arriving in Red Deer, our first destination was Outlaw Eagle Manufacturing and Burnt Lake Motorsports, their factory dealership. Greeted warmly by Sherilyn Carter, Communications Manager, Rob Cruel Sales, and Dale Whiteside, the President and Owner, we chatted about the agenda for the next few days and river boating in general. The enthusiasm for their sport was both genuine and catching. Dale's passion has translated into a successful racing career as a two-time world champion and a top designer and manufacturer. While we toured the manufacturing facility, Dale and several friends gathered to prep a few boats, including his race boat, ready to haul them to the lower Red Deer River for our introduction to jet boating. At the launch site, it was evident that I was in for a bit of a thrill. Rather than introduce me slowly to the boats, they had decided that fast was probably the way to get our feet wet. Lining up to launch were James Horvath's brand new Eagle Performance Boat, a sweet looking 21 foot 6 inch V-Hull with an LSX 454 putting out 638 horsepower to the Hamilton Jet, and Dale's 21 foot tunnel race boat. While Dale's boat was prepped for the run, I climbed into a shorty ray suit with full flotation, padding for impact resistance, and a full face helmet complete with intercom. If this wasn't enough to get the adrenaline going, the sound of the big block race engine bellowing through its headers certainly did. Looks like I'm getting my first experience, a rush on the water, high speed tour with uh, the Outlaw Eagle team. So really looking forward to this, it should be an absolute blast. After the engine was warmed, I clambered over the bow and strapped myself into the navigator seat with a five point safety harness. Dale pushed us off the trailer and we drifted out into the fast flowing river as Dale geared up. Firing back up, we headed up river slowly while Dale explained all of the safety procedures. With that out of the way, he immediately picked up the pace to an effortless 50 miles per hour to pre-run the river looking for deadheads, canoeists and fishing boats, extra critical with the smoke from BC's forest fires blanketing the river. Once satisfied, it was full throttle time. I was not prepared for the sudden acceleration of a thousand horsepower being fed into the jet pump. We are up and running with the trees along the banks blurring in my peripheral vision. Through sweeping turns and progressively tighter turns, Dale slid the eagle effortlessly like the pro driver he is. Determining that I was comfortable with the ride and speed, he pressed down on the foot pedal and the boat shot forward. Tearing down the river, I found it difficult to hold my head steady as the wind buffeted my helmet. As Dale feathered the throttle through the turns and mashed it to the deck in the straights, the GPS speedo in front of me repeatedly hit 109 miles per hour. I was just ecstatic. The ride was definitely the thrill of a lifetime. For my second experience, I hopped aboard with James for some runs as he was breaking in the engine on his new boat. Within minutes, he turned the helm over to me, rather trusting, I thought. It only took a few moments to realize that driving a flat-bottom jet-propelled boat is quite different to what I'm used to. The stern of the boat slides through every turn, and it takes practice to balance the throttle and steering inputs to get the boat to head exactly where you want it. Join us later in the show as we tour the North Saskatchewan River. Welcome back to Alberta and the North Saskatchewan River. After passing through Rocky Mountain House, elevation 3,245 feet, we arrived at the Saunders Boat Launch on the North Saskatchewan River, ready to run the river upstream in the shadow of the Shunda Mountains. The group of boats consisted of a 23-foot outlaw musquaw with a 502 big block, a second musquaw 20 with a small block, two 19-foot outlawed lynxes powered by Mercury Sport Jets, James Eagle Sport with the LSX 454, and an Eagle Sport V16 with a Mercury Sport Jet. With all of the boats loaded with gear, food, beverages, and barbecues, the gang challenged the steep launch ramp and lined up along the shore ready to go. Underway the first stretch of the river we were cruising was considered an excellent recreational run. 
Nothing overly challenging on the main river, good average depths, but plenty of rocks, gravel bars, and turbulent waters to keep you on your toes. Vast stretches of the river are lined with pines right down to the water's edge. Other areas are more open floodplains with gravel and sandbanks. In the background, and in some areas quite close to the river, the Rockies start their climb skyward, and occasionally we glimpse the higher elevations through the smoke. Traveling the river, not only do you enjoy the awesome scenery, but it is also quite a rush keeping an eye out on the other jet boats in tow through some of the twists and turns. Since this was a relatively tame river, I was able to spend quite a bit of time at the helm, learning the nuances of handling the jet boat. In this size and style of boat, you will find yourself standing most of the time, with one hand on the wheel and the other on the throttle. Through gentle turns, the hull seems to handle normally. But as the pace picks up, you find out rather quickly that the 8 degree hull can slide quite a bit. As I began to master controlling the sliding turns, I thought I had this river running pretty much under control. Ease off the throttle into the turn, crank the wheel, and point the bow where you wanted it to go. Apply the throttle to maintain the slide, and around you go. Just as I commented to Dale that I thought I had the hang of it and I had experienced what river running was all about, he commented, no you haven't, you haven't graveled it. With that remark still hanging in the air, I rounded a corner to see a gravel bar center stream. I went left, should have gone right, and now we came to a sudden halt in no water on the gravel. It may have been August, but have you waited in a mountain-fed river or stream? It's cold and from my knees down I went numb, along with the rest of the crew and other volunteers who had stopped first to laugh, then to push the boat back into the water. The balance of the day was spent doing what the local boaters do every weekend. We stopped in an alpine clearing on the river where they had established a permanent campsite so they could show us some western hospitality. In this part of Canada, that means fire up the barbecues and get the meat on. In this case, that included awesome ribs and bison burgers and all of the trimmings. We're going to wrap up having our shore lunch here and then get back out on the water. So join us later in the show as we have more river running from Alberta. Day two of my adventure looked like it was going to be a much better day. The wind had shifted and the smoke was thinning out. Since we had arrived, the gang had been hyping up how much tougher and challenging the upper Red Deer River was. So we eagerly set off for a launch area at Garrington Bridge, 30 kilometers west of Bowdoin, Alberta. At the launch, a flat gravel floodplain, I could see right away that this river run was going to be different. The water was flowing rapidly across the shallows, all lined with round rocks. As we headed up river under the highway bridge, we were offered multiple routes to navigate the river. The river split around sand and gravel banks, tree islets, and full-size trees taken down in the spring flood, now stranded in the low waters of late August. The upper Red Deer River is termed a technical river. It is described as being heavily braided, shallow with obstacles galore. Braided describes a river that twists and turns, splits into multiple strands, or flows and recrosses itself repeatedly. Since this stretch of the river flows through the floodplains, it changes course with regularity, so you need a bag full of local knowledge and the right jet boat to conquer it. All of this delivers a boating thrill that I had never experienced. Running at speeds in excess of 50 miles per hour in six inches or less of water and through channels not much wider than the beam of the boat is one big rush. You really have to keep your focus, even as a passenger, so you know when to lean into the turns, brace for a hit, and duck out of the way of a branch from shore. Now I understand the design and construction techniques incorporated in these boats. The hulls are flat for the shallows, the engines are powerful for maximum thrust from the jet propulsion systems, and the hulls are tough, extremely tough. Double and single layers of half to three quarter inch welded aluminum plates backed by multiples of the strongest stringers and bulkheads seam welded in place that I have ever seen. As we ran, the hull ground over gravel, clanged off rocks, and on occasion clipped the shore. 
Riding along with a world champion racer like Dale instilled great confidence so I was able to enjoy the adrenaline high. The experience of sliding around the outside of a gravel bar with the bow of the boat almost planted in it and the stern just off the shore is an experience tough to beat. You know, one of the great things about these boats is how little water they actually need to run these rivers. When approaching an extreme passage of shallow, twisty waters, slowing down and surveying the situation is called for. Over the day, we did that several times and then dropped back into deep water so the boat could accelerate onto plane and take a run at the section. We got beat bad in one section, grounding out the boat and wading and pushing the largest craft on the trip, some 40 meters back to deeper water. Following another shore lunch, this time with bison steaks, fresh corn and salads, it was time to turn back for the ramp to find the trucks and trailers to ensure we could load up before dark. On the run back downstream, Dale was brave enough to let me take over the helm for some of the less technical sections. Never have I had to focus so hard to keep things gathered up on a boat. I could have set a slower pace and relaxed a bit, but that was not my goal. I traveled a long way and I was determined to take it to the max or as far as my limited skills, backed by excellent coaching, would allow. Over the years, I've enjoyed all kinds of boating, from river cruising to cruising on the Great Lakes to touring the canals in Quebec. But this weekend here in Alberta has been absolutely fantastic. River running with the jet boats here has been a thrill of a lifetime, and the experience to drive the boats in some of these complex braided rivers has really been something else. If you ever get the chance to try jet boating somewhere where you live or travel to Western Canada or Western United States or somewhere like New Zealand where it's popular as well, take the opportunity to really enjoy some fantastic boating.